should we stay in the same? Thank God for that beautiful range of how great thou art. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer as our pastor comes forward at this time. We're going to ask Sister Sean if she wouldn't mind blessing the remainder of the service with prayer as Pastor Lee comes forward at this time. Amen, amen, amen. Truly, how great thou art, Lord God. We appreciate you, Lord God. Thank you for salvation. Oh, Lord. For his mind be saved, Lord God. Our mm -hmm. nose is truly pointed towards heaven, Lord God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for all that you've done for us, God. We ask you to bless the service. For us. Yes. Bless Mother yes. Lord God. Yes. Lord God. 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 Help us, Lord God. We're depending on you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter 5. The sermon tonight. The text for it is 1 Peter 5. We'll begin reading verse number. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither be as being lords over God's heritage, right. but being examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd shall appear, Come on. you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Oh my God. Ye all of you, yea, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Very good. It says here. To be clothed with humility. Then it said in verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Tonight I want to preach from the topic of the role of humility. The role of humility. Often we address it in regards to humility itself. But tonight we'll take a different angle and look at it from the perspective of the role. Sometimes when an understanding is endeavored to be obtained, you can address it from multiple angles that the essence of the burden can be received and perceived. So tonight we're going to look at the role of humility and God's divine providence as it pertains to working with God. This is fundamentally important. In fact, it's not Woo! possible to operate within the operations of God without this. It's indispensable. Literally. Indispensable. It's not something that others can actually observe. Never ever be concerned with someone outside saying you have it or don't have it. Right, because it's technically internal. Right. It can look like you have it when you don't have it. Right, yeah. And it may look like you don't have it when you have it. Amen. It's personal. God. It's, right. Amen. it's personal. That's something that you would rarely even address concerning someone else because it's so personal. Yeah. <laughs> what you may deem as a lack of humility may be a person that is Feel with insecurities actually that is expressing themselves to build confidence so they can operate. <laughs> but you look at it, you say they lack humility. When technically that and person actually lacks right. confidence. Yes. 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 In yes. God's eyes, they're the opposite of what you just said. Come on, and sometimes Amen. what you think is humility is someone putting on a front to get a certain response out of you so they can be perceived as humble. That's 
sick. Right. See God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, it's very personal. Amen. It's not ever something, if you really understand this, it's not something you ever engage in that space as it pertains to somebody else. Because technically, to be concerned by somebody else's lack or thereof is a lack of Why don't you get that book tape? They understand. They understand. If I'm sitting there concerned about this space and not concerned about my own self, that's a telltale sign that I've probably got some praying I need to do. The way God designed it is it's critically important to understand its role to understand why it's important and how it operates. Humility is all important. It's impossible to even come into the space of God without humanity possessing humility. Let me say that again. Humanity cannot even operate effectively in the space of God without humility. It's what he requires to operate in an acceptable perspective, an acceptable level when it comes to God. Without this, you can't operate acceptably in his space. It's undeniable. It's critically important. It's fundamentally important to possess it and to have it. So we're going to look into the role that it plays and how we possess it so that we can operate in the space that God has for us so we can be what God has for us to be individually and collectively. Humility is essential and important. Humility is the, quali the quality or state of being humble. The attitude that you have no special importance that makes you superior to others. The attitude that you have no special importance that makes you superior to others. Humble, having or showing a modest or low estimation of one's own importance. Freedom from pride, arrogance, or haughtiness. Lowliness of mind. Now, vital humility seeks to bring glory and honor to God and looks out for the interest of others above their own. Let me say that again. Bible humility seeks to honor, to bring glory and honor to God and looks out for the interest of others. Humility plays an essential role in the church. Humility plays an essential role in the operation of God. Now, go to Psalms 149, verse 4. In order to come into a proper relationship with God, it takes what's called salvation. You don't come into a proper relationship with God through church joining, right. or through any self-improvement mechanisms, such as, you know, I, I want to come into a right relationship with God, I'm going to begin to pray more, I'm going to begin to read more. None of those things. You see, works, works cannot position a person to right standing with God. That's right, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. It takes salvation to do that. Yeah. All right? Jesus told Nicodemus, he must be Born again. 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 You've got to be born again. There's nothing, your rights, the filthy rags, feed the poor, do whatever. But in order to come into a right relationship with God, you've got to come through salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the way into salvation is by humanity going all the way down to the dirt. Oh my God, yes, sir. You can't bring, why? Because you can't operate with God with any, amen, self or, it, or, or a lack of humility. It takes humility to come into that space. Yeah. All right? Go ahead and read, Brother Frank. Psalm 149, 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He will beautify the meek, the Greek word there, the Hebrew word there, also means humble, the humble, Gil said, the humble and lowly souls who have been truly humbled under the sense of sin, willing to repent, end quote, willing to repent 
and seek pardon and redemption through Christ. Let me say that again. He'll beautify the meek with salvation. Gil said, the humble and lowly souls who have been truly humbled under the sense of sin. In order for a person to get saved, they have to humble themselves and repent from them sins. In order to repent from your sins, you got to be broken in godly sorrow. And how that godly sorrow is obtained uh, by a human being, by humanity, is humanity sin, the awfulness that they've done, the ugliness of sin. Anybody truly getting saved cannot come to God saying, I'm not that bad. Yes, you are that bad. You are that bad and you are in need of help. You're in need of desperate help. You cannot help yourself. You are ashamed of what you've done. You are are sorrowful for what you've done. You see your filthiness of what you've been involved in. Your righteousness is nothing. You don't deserve salvation. You don't come to God with your chest stuck out saying, uh, give me what, no, 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 God, I don't deserve it. Lord, please have mercy upon my soul. I humble myself. I repent of my sins. I'm done, Lord. I'm nothing, Lord. I'm so sorry. I have no case to argue. I'm guilty. If my sin is ever before me, and Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry. It wasn't mama for it. It wasn't the way I was raised. It wasn't this person's fault. It was my fault, Lord. I acknowledge my transgressions, my sins that are ever before me. There's an act of humility that a human being must go through in order to get a breakthrough to what's called Bible salvation. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta humble yourself. That's why it's important oftentimes to even kneel. My Lord, don't even think you that proud. The Lord forgive me. No, get on your knees, my God, and humble yourself before God. Get all the way down there and just humble yourself. Oh God, if you don't do it, you won't receive help. You will still be struggling and dealing with the things and spirits that you've been dealing with. Why? Because you don't want to humble yourself. My pride is so deadly. Thinking I'm good. You ain't good. In order to get saved, you have to realize I'm not good. I need help. I need God. I'm good. I'm okay. You will never get saved. You will never get Bible salvation. You may join somebody's church. But you will never receive Bible salvation. You will never receive real breakthrough. You will never receive a true witness from God. Until you humble yourself. That's why many people break down crying. Even grown men just, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Why they just humble themselves. Oh my God, That's why a lot of children, mm. a lot of people out there, lives are being destroyed. Why? Because they don't want to humble themselves. Oh my God. And my Lord, okay, God's going to eventually get your attention. Okay, that don't work. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit more. Eventually, God, you're going to humble yourself. Eventually, you're going to humble. I'm tough. I'm, eventually, what would it take, AIDS? Mm. Oh my God. Will it take a deathbed? Cancer in the fourth day. Oh, I'm good. I'm strong. You get down to 90 pounds within six weeks. God can humble you. You can think, oh, I got a good job. God allow you to do your finances. Put a hole in the back. Boom. Lord have mercy. Now you ain't got nothing. Now you, now you get a, oh, God, you think you all of that. God has a way. You see, there's two ways to get humble. One, God can humble you. Or thank you, somebody. Or two, you can humble yourself. My Lord, I, I, I remember when I was getting saved, I said, Lord, hold on. I'm coming, I'm humbling myself. Why? Because you can help me. You can definitely help me. If I think I'm all that, you can help me. So here we see, even to get saved, it takes humbling and even the most wicked sinner, Amen. turn to 1 Kings 21, 25, can receive what's called Bible salvation if the proper humility is present. 1 Kings 21, 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, uh -huh. which did sell himself to work the wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel's wife stirred up. So Ahab was antagonistic toward Elijah, the man of God. And he did some very, very, very wicked, wicked things. But this lets you know the power of humility. It says there was none. Now mind you, there were some people in doing adultery, fornication, murder. They were doing a bunch of stuff. But the scripture said there was none like unto Ahab. In other words, he was like 
the, what we would call the lowest of the low. But look at the power of humility. Come on, everybody. And he did very abominably in following idols. My Lord of all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. That's very low. The Amorites, come on, read. And it came to pass when Ahab heard these those words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and now, fasted. Sackcloth was an outward demonstration of humility. It means that I'm just taking off, just put on sackcloth, ashes. That was like, in that day, the greatest demonstration of humility. Kind of like Nineveh. You know, just put on sackcloth. At, I, we have nothing but, we're just, we're just crying for mercy. Come on, read your friend. And lay his sackcloth and went softly. And went softly. That's humility. Come on, read it. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah, mm -hmm. the Tishbite, saying, mm -hmm. See thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? See how he did what? How he humbleth, humbleth himself before me. In his lowest state, he humbled himself before God. Come on, read my friend. Because he humbled himself before me, mm -hmm. I will not bring the evil in his days. But in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his He said, house. because he humbled me, I'm going to have mercy upon him. That's the power of humility in the eyes of God. It didn't matter how bad they were. It doesn't matter what you've done tonight. It doesn't matter how far you may have strayed from God. If there can be the proper humility, if there can just be the proper humility, God himself will not, amen, he can even hold back what he was about to do. Why? Because of humility. Humility is a powerful force. It can move God. Humility, not, not, not intellect, not money. Not, humility is a powerful force. It can actually move God. God was about to do this. And humility, amen, it doesn't matter what you've done, especially if you've done a whole bunch of stuff. If you can just get them to humble themselves, it doesn't matter what plight their life is in. If they can just humble themselves, if they can humble themselves and cry out to God and say, Lord, will you have mercy upon me? It doesn't matter what your child is dealing with tonight. Don't look at the fact that they're involved in some wicked stuff, maybe some abominable stuff. It doesn't matter if they can just come to the point in which they say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. Lord, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm going to tell you, it's a miracle for some people to get saved. Some of us that gotten saved, we need to shout every time. That song said, Glory to God, I know I'm saved. This is a blessing. I pray. Why? Because I'm gonna tell you, some of us have built such idolatry to ourselves. We built ourselves up in such a way that we wouldn't hear nothing. We didn't try to hear nobody. We get into a situation, we can work it out our own self. We're gonna be okay. And my Lord, for us, Amen. For the spirit of conviction to penetrate our hearts, hearts. Amen. To arrest us, to cause us, my Lord, to bow down, to break down and bow down and cry out to God and say, God, I need you. God, I'm sorry. God, I want to be saved and don't care if nobody's watching me. I don't care. Talk about me. Dog me out. I don't care. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be amen, right with God. I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of going to the I'm tired of having emptiness. I'm tired. I'm just tired. I want to be saved. Amen. Praise God. That's a miracle. To some that build up idols to themselves, just proud. Oh, proud spirits. Nobody can tell you nothing. Ain't listening to nobody. Can figure it out yourself. Dress a certain way. Walk a certain way. Talk a certain way. God said, you want what I got for you? It's only one way you're going to get to it. It ain't going to be through no catechism. It's not going to be through no study. It's not going to be through no uh, money you give. you got to humble yourself. If you don't humble, and he's sitting there, and the Holy Ghost is watching because he's going to regenerate, and he's watching to see if he sees sufficient humility. Because if he don't see it, amen, then he's not going to do the work. Amen. And if he don't do the work, you're not going to get the witness. He's going to see, did you come all the way clean? Did you let it all go? Did you humble yourself completely? Or do you just want relief? See, some people just want relief. Yes. But when you really humble yourself, you want to get right with God. Amen. You want to get right. I'm not trying to please people. Amen. Some people, amen, get salvation for other things. 
I want this and I want that. No, no, no. That won't produce the right humility in order for you to get the breakthrough. Some people got people that hurt them. Amen. And they still hold on to that. In order to get the right breakthrough, you have to let go of all your hurt, all your pain, what they did for you, because those are crutches. Those are spiritual, psychological crutches for some people not to let go and let God just break them all the way down and do what they do. Right, they got stuff that people have did to them or perspectives that they have that they're going to have to let it all go. Let it all go. It don't matter what they've done. It, it don't matter what they did. It don't matter what they said. It don't matter, amen. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. You got something to say about everything for everybody else. Everything that's happened to you is because of this and this and that. And you got all the answers. You're going to come to me. You're going to write, I ain't got all the answers. I need God. I need God. Lord, I need God. Oh, if you can humble yourself like that, God, humble yourself. He'll lift you up. Amen. He'll exalt you. Amen. He'll deliver you. He'll give you breakthrough. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. Amen. Why? Because you humbled yourself. Ahab was none like an Ahab. That's why you don't give up on nobody. Just pray for the right humility. And sometimes you got to quit petting people and petting spirits, and you got to let them fall. Yes, amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you why. Because unless they fall to a certain level, amen, they're not going to humble themselves. Their hearts are too hard. Amen. With the prodigal son, it said when he has spent some. Come on, my Bible scholars. When he has spent three quarters. I thought in my mind, his dad was wealthy. He said, how do you know? He had servants. He had gold. He had, he had various things. He had a signet. That's, that's like authority to to with, with validation that's recognized. His dad was on that level. He wasn't talking about he gave him his ring back jewelry. He wasn't talking about ornamental jewelry. No. That was some authority that that family had. And it says, give me my portion. There's only two of them. Here it is. It said, and a few days later, when he had spent all, I always talk to my Say he had 500,000. In today's currency, he probably had millions. Uh, but say he had 500,000. Okay, in a few days, it's down to four. A few days later, it's down to two. At some point, you should wake up and say, man, this ain't the life. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And a few days later, you're down to 75,000. I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't take long. Now you're down. To forty dollars, he still wasn't done. Man, spears ain't no joke. Spears ain't no joke. Spears ain't no joke. You still won't listen. You didn't. It didn't took your health, your family, your 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 your, your uh, uh, freedom. Your it didn't took everything from you, and you still out there. Some people won't humble themselves, so sometimes. You gotta just take a step back, let them fall. Not that you don't love them, but maybe, see, this is what the old saints would do when they were praying. They would say, Lord, get a hold of them, save them at any cost. Why? Because they ain't listening. See, saints didn't pray that at first. They pray, Lord, save my children. Save but when they saw a child, just, just won't listen. Just getting warning after warning. Come up out of sin. Come up out of sin. Let go. One raggedy relationship after another raggedy relationship. One health scare after another health scare. Car accident. Every of you just won't listen. Saints of old, they didn't have those old petty spirits. Oh, sensitive spirit. Oh, my child. Oh, no. Oh, no. This old time out age. Children growing up with no whoopings. <laughs> time out. Go to time. Please. We didn't go a week without. Please. Don't get wore out. Praise the Lord. They, they, they created stuff to wear us out. Oh, it seemed like they did. I didn't they, they, they did. But it seemed like they just came up with stuff. They, no, no, you, you look like you want to get Hi, look, what's that look? <laughs> what's the look? <laughs> like you look like you want what? Uh, help me out. What kind of look does that look like? You look like you want to just get wore out. Man. Like, <laughs> I, what? But these are the same parents that went and prayed. 
Lord, yes, sir. whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Baba, I got in this uh, situation and now I can't walk. Mama, they said they're going to put me in prison. I'm not going to sit there and cry. I'm not going to go bankrupt myself trying to get you out of it. Oh, no, 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 no. Mama, what happened? I was praying. Oh, my God. What happened? I was praying. Pray. I have been. You won't humble yourself. You won't humble yourself. So here we see humility is needed. Now, let me just quote some of these. We want to get to the thrust of the message tonight. It takes humility to get saved, to come into right relationship with God. It's so desired. Repent and believe the gospel. Yes. Salvation is obtained through humility. It takes humility to get sanctified. Galatians says, for I am crucified with Christ. Self must be crucified. I saw the death. I had to die. A death in which my soul is dry. Humility to get sanctified. Lord, there's a part of me that shouldn't be there. If a person lacks proper humility, it affects their spiritual perception. Amen. Let me say this again. If a person lacks a certain humility, they lack a certain spiritual perception. They will call something that should be gone. Either sanctify it by giving it some spiritual name, or they won't label it like it should be labeled. See, it takes humility to get sanctified. Lord, I see something that shouldn't be there. And I'm just being honest. It ain't about others, it's about me. There's a stubbornness. There is a stubbornness that I possess. Lord, that if I get pushed in a corner, Lord, there's a stubbornness. You see, sanctification is a, a total surrender in which a person is just completely pliable. God can do what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to. That's why I say, I'm crucified with Christ. Oh, man, it's crucified. Lord, just do whatever. No, no. There's a certain stubbornness that's there, and it's not always there. It said the man had a son who had a spirit. It said oft times he cast him into the fire. It wasn't all the time. Most of the time he was fine. If you don't believe me, marry somebody that ain't sanctified. A good percentage of the time, they're fine. Ain't no issue at all. But I'm going to tell you, you won't realize it when you run into that old man inside of him. When you run into the old lady inside. It's a harsh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it, 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 it's something that's so strong that you're going to realize you better back up. It's something that's so, it shouldn't be nothing so strong that anybody spiritually perceives that you would do something or you ain't going to but or there's just a strong stubbornness. There should be a pliability there. There should be a faith that even if you have to be walked on, you can pray about it and let God, look, my spouse is going to walk on me, but I, I ain't going to be walked on. Yeah, if I'm sanctified, I'm not going to fight you. There's a humility that you'll see when we get to a point of an impasse where it looks like it can't be this way or this way or that way when a person is truly got the old man crucified that person don't fear Amen. that old attitude coming out that old stubborn spirit coming out of it oh meanness they never right to be mean just mean coming just, just, just a meanness about ain't no saint would feel with the holy Ghost ever mean ever I don't care what people say you shouldn't even come across as mean That's right. I'm telling you the holy ghost don't operate like that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, my Lord. You should never be mean. You should never get no attitude. I don't talk how you want to talk. Sing how you want to sing. Preach how you want to preach. But you, that tree is known by their fruit. Amen. That, let the evidence speak for it. It is what it is. And if you don't humble yourself, you won't see yourself. And you end up dying like that. Preach, Pastor. I'm telling you what it is. You end up dying like that. Why? Because you can't help yourself. Why? Oh, I claimed it. I don't care how long you claimed it. If you see something that shouldn't be there, then unclaim it. So you can really have it. A lack of humility will hinder people from truly going to the Shekinah, to that second room, amen, where the cherubims was, where the glory of God is. Humble themselves. Say, Lord, all I am and hope to be. I commit it ain't about my life. Take my life and let it be. I'm nothing. It don't matter. I'm nothing. It don't matter, Lord. Do what you want to do. Mm. It's 
some things that I'll never want to see again. Yes, sir. I'll never want nobody to have to walk up sideways to me. No, 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 no. If a person don't humble themselves, That's right, Pastor. they'll never get the experience. No. They'll be flip-flopping all around Zion. Maybe not out and in, but they'll flip-flop with victory, flip-flop with consistency, Amen. call stuff another name. Amen. And it was sad is other people would see it, but they won't. Right. Why? Because they ain't got humility. It takes humility to spiritually perceive accurately. And the, and the most humility you need is to see yourself accurately. That's right. Sometimes you can get before God and God begin to show you things about yourself. Man, and that is, that's when God wants to improve you. But if you ain't humble, you can't even receive that. No, man, God is trying to work with you. He's trying to show you yourself. And then you start extenuating your positive attributes. Well, I've seen so, I study so much. I, it don't matter, man. If God showed me something that I need to improve on, amen, Lord, I'm not going to take my strong areas, amen, and hide my weak areas. No, I don't want no weak areas, and you're trying to help me not have no weak areas, but I keep allowing my strong areas to camouflage my weak areas. But Lord, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. If this area is weak, Lord, get me. May I do whatever it needs to be done. Mm. Humility. Without humility, you have a church with people that don't really got the full Holy Ghost. You won't know until certain situations develop. All right? Without, it takes humility in order to stay saved. Not only get saved, get saved, the Bible but saved. The Bible says in James 4, 6, God resists the problem, but give grace to the humble. You gotta humble yourself. And we have to say, Lord, I need help. You will come to situations, the role of humility is to help you stay safe. You will come to situations that you can't figure it out yourself. You will come to situations you can't make sense of it. Your experience, all your study, all your prayer, all the counsel you receive. It is not sufficient in this moment to help you see your way through here. And if you don't have humility, see, humility will let you know how utterly dependent you are on God. And it will cause you not to try to figure it out yourself, not to try to rely on your experience or weakness. And it will cause you just to fall on your face and say, Lord, I don't know the way. Lord, I don't know. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Lord, I'm struggling, Lord. Lord, I need to make sense of it. I can't just keep on keeping on and keep my chest out and just make my way through it. Lord, I need help, Lord. Lord, the devil's trying to confuse me. Father, the devil's trying to abuse me, trying to discourage me. Lord, I need help, Lord. And I'm going to tell you, amen, when you humble yourself in that way and you see God on that level, God will begin to reveal things to you that he wouldn't reveal to you unless you came at him like that. God will begin to give you a grace that he wouldn't have given you unless you came like that. God will begin to give you an understanding that he wouldn't have given. That's why a lot of people are walking around many times confused. They don't know about this and they don't know about that. They're going on instinct, amen, and not real assurance and conviction. Why? Because they're not humbling themselves when they get into those situations where they run. I can't go no further. I need God. And you can cry like a little baby. All your experience, all your victory, all your wherewithal is all laid aside. And you're crying like a new convert. I need you, Lord. Lord, you need out here. Lord, show me. Lord, reveal to me. Lord, clear up the confusion. Lord, speak to me. Lord, let me know. It takes humility to pray how you need to pray in those moments. That's sister so and so. I'm talking about seeing some of the old saints that I looked up to so highly. I hear them praying. My Lord, I was expecting a prayer of a certain authority. But I'm hearing a prayer of utter dependency, utter desire, utter, Lord, we got confusion in the face. Lord, I don't know. Lord, I, and I'm looking at them like, man, I'm looking at you for answers. And they're saying, that's your problem. That's your problem. Some situations you have to look at God yourself to get an understanding yourself. And if you don't get before God yourself, there will be an assurance you don't have. Because some assurances you can get from others you depend upon, but some assurances you got to get from the throne itself. Where there's no confusion. God has blessed me. I wonder what happened. I had to get before God. I couldn't go outside today. Why? Because I was in a situation in which the devil was trying to get into my mind. I needed to get a hold of God. There was a certain authority that I operated, that I need to operate with, that I wouldn't operate with. 
Amen. That I needed. Amen. I had to humble myself and cry out to God and say, Lord, I need you on that level. Amen. Despite my record. Amen. Despite my tenureship. I need you like a little baby needs you. He resisted the proud, but give grace to the humble. Now, humility needed to get saved, sanctified, to stay saved. Humility is needed for the unity of the body. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Bless the Lord. The role of humility. God has so designed it. This one thing called humility is needed for the divine operations of God to be partook of. For a person to partake in these operations, God has designed it for humility to be present. Ephesians 4, read one. Verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, mm -hmm. with all holiness yes. and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here it says, <clears throat> with all lowliness. Humility of mind. Humility is needed for the unity of the body. There are many parts of the body, but humility is needed for the body to function well. When the Bible speaks about the eye, the more comely members, they won't be respected or properly utilized if humility is not present. If humility is not present, you'll end up not only having disrespect, but you'll end up having strife. If humility is not present, you'll end up having jealousy. Amen. If humility is not present, you'll end up having cliques in the body. If humility is not present, instead of competing against the devil's kingdom, They'll be competing with each other. All right. See it clear. Oh, yes. The Amen. role of humility is to keep the body of Christ on one accord, Amen. battling, supporting, loving, strengthening each other yes. as the body faces the enemy on the outside. Yes. Without humility, the body won't function, and the enemies will go from outside to in. The role of humility, 1 Peter 5, 6, is in order to get saved, sanctified, in order to stay saved, he resists the proud, give grace to the humble, in order for the body to function as a unit. Also, in order for the church to obtain glory, 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he may exalt you in due time, mm -hmm. casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Uh -huh. If you humble yourself, God is able to exalt. Why? Because the humble will make sure that when the exaltation takes place, the glory received from it will go to God and not the vessel. Yeah. Amen. Humility is needed for the glory to be manifested. Apostolic demonstration requires apostolic humility. Sir. True. If you understood the depth of humility that the apostles operated up under, they wouldn't receive anything. They wouldn't receive, they would actively stop a person trying to exalt them. It was a humility, and it was clear and evident all the way through them. 
They had no rank, no better than, no this, no that. They made themselves the least because Jesus said he that would be the greatest made themselves a certain. They were nothing. That's why God was, God will destroy a person if he allows them and shares the glory with them that their humility couldn't handle. That's right. Wow. All right. Humility is necessary in order, the more humble we are, you are, I am, the more God can use for his glory. All right. Now, let us look at Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing. Go to 2 Kings 22. Josiah, he gave a powerful demonstration of the role of humility. 2 Kings 22, read verse 3. Verse 3. Now remember, spiritual light is spiritual understanding that we all must walk in. In order to walk in spiritual light, humility is necessary. 2 Kings 22, come on and read. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shephard, mm -hmm. the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, mm -hmm. the scribe to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah. Now this is when Josiah was king and he was eight years old when he began to reign. Now this was some time later in the 18th year of his reign. And he sent he sent the scribe to the house of the Lord and they ended up Finding, go to verse 8, just for time's sake. And Hilkiah the, the high priest said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law mm -hmm. in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, mm -hmm. and he read. Come on, read. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king's word again and said, Thy servant hath gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest have delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Come on, read. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he written his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Abraham come, the son of Shaphan. Let's go down to verse number 19. Because thy heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wet before me, I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Okay, stop right here. This is very important. Now these people were living in a manner that was, it was what it was. They were going through motion, living like this. Well, they were rebuilding the temple and they got, the, to, uh, the, the, they found the book that they dusted off. So what's this? The scribe took it to the high priest, right? Whoa. There is some things according to God's word that we're doing that is inconsistent with this truth. There are some things we're not doing. Whoa. At that moment, self-justification, the spirit of self-justification comes on the scene. And it says, you're okay. You're okay operating as you've been operating. This will require perhaps more. But it says when the king received it, he rent his clothes, representing humbling himself. 
saying, Lord, I didn't know. God thought enough. He could have not let them find the law. He could have let them just keep on operating. But he thought enough of them to show them where it was at. In other words, to present greater light. At that moment, that was a crisis decision. Because most people that are operating in a spiritual space, they get a comfort and there is a level of experience that's been obtained. So it's very difficult for them to consider further light unless there's a certain depth of humility present. That depth of humility will produce something in them that desires to be all that God would have for them to be, despite what it caused, despite reputation, despite affiliation, despite anything. I want to be right with God. I want to be measured to all the light that God thought enough of me to show me. But if there's a lack of humility, when God shows greater light, It'll be very difficult for them to walk in that light because they'd have to humble themselves and either say what I had wasn't fully sufficient or what I had wasn't fully accurate or what I had wasn't perfectly lined up to the will of God. And it's not OK. Most people don't possess the necessary humility. You're talking about humility. This is the way God designed it. Light is no joke. Well, how can you preach the everlasting gospel to somebody that may not perceive it all? You may go to a relative and you're sharing with them that they can live holy. They may not have ever understood it. But you anoint it, show them in the word, this, that, and the other. What would they say? Well, my church don't teach that. I'm a deacon. Or I feel. It don't matter what. I'm not a part. I'm not interested even in somebody's building in somebody's congregation. I'm interested in being one with God. I'm interested in pleasing God at the highest level that I can. Amen. I'm humble. It's not about, I don't care if I was a deacon down there and now i got to just sit on the church, church pit. I'd rather sit on the church pit and be in truth amen, than to be esteemed down in Babylon. It don't matter to me. I just want to be saved and I want to be right. Talk about me, dog me out. I'm taking my stand. It takes humility to take a stand. And to acknowledge, I didn't have all the light. I didn't have all the truth. I didn't know everything. I'm only myself. I was walking in the light that I didn't know. But God has shown me more. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for showing it to me. Amen. The enemy attacked humility at such a level because basically everything as it pertains to God is predicated upon this. You may say, brother, I share the gospel with my aunt or my granddad or my father. He just won't. I'm going to give me some more scriptures. More scriptures is not your issue. Exactly. Mm. All right. Say, I'm telling you the truth. More script The scriptures you shared are clear enough for a humble soul. Wow. You're not promoting a church. You're not promoting a people. You're not promoting an idea. All that you're promoting is humanity being in a proper, consistent, victorious relationship with God. Anybody that's humble that didn't have that light will run to that light. Yes, sir. Amen. Man will jump over pews to get to that light. Right. Cannot wait to take a full stand. Amen. I'm not trying to be on both sides of the fence. I'm not trying to be partial. I'm, I'm all the way in. I'm 100% in. Amen. That's how God can take them to the next level because there's people that God wants to use them to bring to greater light and to influence, to help them to have victory that they need. But when you stay on the fence, amen, they're never going to be fully convinced. Why? Because you're going to lack a certain authority until you take a full stand and you see the power, amen, of full and greater light. You got to humble yourself and just be, I, Lord, I'm humbling myself. That's what he said. Now, I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to lift you up, and you're going to attract other people. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. But you got to humble yourself. All the operations of God to get glory, humble, gain shared his glory, get saved, humble, sanctified, unified. All right. Let's close it out with Jesus. Close it out with Jesus. This scripture in Philippians. 
possibly could be overlooked. It speaks about Jesus and the role of humility that he demonstrated. And this is all essential in order for us to magnify Christ. Look at the power of his example as it pertains to the role of humility. We're going to close out the sermon on the role of humility in Jesus' life. Come on, read. Jesus couldn't have done what he did without humility. Come on, read. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, begin reading verse number 1. We just read after this. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, mm -hmm. if any com comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Fulfill ye my joy, uh -huh. that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Uh -huh. Let nothing be done through how strife. How we on one accord in one mind? Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. In other words, it's easy to be on one accord because we're all working on the same mission. Amen. We're all working on it. It's a job to be done. We're all working for that job to be done at the highest level, yeah. not for me to shine. Yeah. You get it? We're, we're all working on it. If we're a team, we're, we're, we're like a body. We're all working on the same. It's not like the, the finger, if the toes got to be at the start line and they got to curl a certain way so the kickoff is good. And the calf got to be tight so it's ready. Amen. The elbow's got to be up so we can run. The head got to stay down. The neck got to stay down so the wind current won't be as strong. And the thigh got to run in a certain way. And it's got to bring your lungs, got your nose. Gotta get, they're not arguing, man, that the toe was saying, I want the glory because I was on the starting block and my toes was curled and I kicked off good. And the elbow said, but my elbow was up and the lungs said, I opened up. Who cares? We want to win the race.
to take on man. Now, in him doing that, he had to suspend certain rights that he had as God. The humility that it took to suspend rights that he had for the greater cause. Okay. He took on the form of man, which was despicable, so to speak. Not man in this originally created space, but fallen man. He was subject to pain, ridicule, and he was willing to Read this verse. Go over to uh, uh, verse 3. Go back to verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, mm -hmm. but in lowliness of mind, that each esteem other better than himself. He is esteeming, I'm not nothing compared to God. It's robbery for you even to consider me. Technically, he was, but he suspended that right in order to take on the assignment that God had for him. In other words, it may be some rights that you have, but if you want to demonstrate Christ at all times, there may be some rights you have that you are willing to suspend in those moments that God may be glorified. You ain't gonna talk to me. Talk to me that way. I'm a woman. You shouldn't be talked like that as a woman. But I'm going to allow and I'm not going to come back at you. I'm going a, I'm to a suspend my manhood to not go back at you like, I, like, I, like, like my manhood want to go back at you. I'm willing to suspend it. Amen. Uh, I'm a saint just like you are. I got to. No, no, no. Before I allow strife to come between us, I'll suspend. You walked on me. You talked about me. You didn't treat me right. I'm a saint as much as you are. No, I'm not going there. Yes, sir. No, I'm not going there. Yes, sir. I'm not going to go toe to toe with you. Yes, I'm not. I'm willing. I'm a, okay. Here, y'all having an issue. Expose I'm the man. Expose you ain't going to treat me like. All right. It's fine. Expose it. It's fine. God. Yes, sir. It's fine. Mm. Well, I'm just saying you'll never listen to me. It's, it, it, I got you. I got you. Mm. It's yours. We, we can go. I personally didn't feel we needed to. A person didn't feel this any other, or it's, I'm suspending rights that I have for the glory my God. My God. that God wants to accomplish. Yes, sir. Right. That's it's fine. Sometimes you can even be a minister, you can be whatever. Humble yourself. Amen. It's fine. You no know, issue. It ain't no, no, and you, it's no issue. Let this mind be in you. That was incredible. I'm the director. Yo. Don't you know how long I've been? There are certain rights you should have as an elder. The Bible says it. You say, no, respect the person. No, no, the Bible says there's a certain way you treat the elders. But if some young person want to have wind in their jaws and want to, you know what? Before I come back at you and before I allow the devil to get me out of the spirit, I'll suspend my rights to let you say what you need to say. Let you, let you say what you need to say. And they come back, oh, they walked on brother so-and-so. And don't they know he's a hell? And don't they the, let God get the glory? I'm going to let God have. Jesus took on the form of man. Suspended rights that he had. He could have just jumped off that mountain and flew when the devil said, I'm Jesus. No, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. There's certain things. He could have caught 10,000 angels. Jesus rolled deep. Please, your brother Jesus, he rolled deep, deep. As much as the sand is in the sea, that's just how deep Jesus is. He said, no, I'm not going to call any. Here am I. All right. Get this. So one, he suspended himself. Really quickly, little Frank. It says, thought in that robbery, verse seven. Come on. But made himself of no reputation. Come on. And took upon him the form of a servant. Never doing things for reputation's sake. But took on himself the form of a servant. 
and was made into the likeness of man. Man's nothingness. He didn't come to be served, but came to serve. Oh, yeah. He didn't come for titles, but he came to serve. Come on now. Came to serve. Made himself of no reputation. It doesn't matter who gets the credit. It doesn't matter. I just want to make sure it gets done. The Bible Romans said not to think of yourself more highly than you are. He's saying, let this mind be in you. Come on and read, Brother Frank. Yes. And being found in the fashion of as man, uh -huh. he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And came obedient to death. It says he humbled himself and it was Barnes, it might have been Clark, who was saying he humbled himself through death. And it was talking about he humbled himself by coming, then he humbled himself to his parents, he humbled himself to circumcision, he humbled himself to be uh, uh, under their auspices, although he was older than they were. Uh, 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 he, he said, brother, what are you talking about? You know Jesus was older than his parents. Y'all figured out. Y'all figured out in the beginning. What's the word? Amen. So, so anyway, amen. He, he listened to them, although he was older than them. He was their parents. But anyway, he, 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 he humbled himself to be baptized. Remember John said, I need to be baptized? No. He humbled himself to be spit on. He humbled himself. He was obedient. He was obedient in detail. That's why the scripture said, Saul, you lost your kingdom. Why? When you were little in your own sight, God made you and put the anointing on you. Samuel anointed you when you were little in your own sight. But now, you done lifted yourself. What do you mean how I lifted myself? What said I hear? I hear some sheep. Well, we kept them the sack. Oh, so now you're going to be slightly disobedient for your own reasons, for your own perspective. It said he humbled himself unto death all the way through. That type of mind means a humility of obedience in the smallest things. I'm being humble. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm being honest. I've been obedient in the small. I ain't doing that. I, whoa. Nobody gonna tell me. When a person has this mind, you'll see a tendency of being humble in the smallest things. I want to be obedient to God. Lord, you convict me. Lord, you show me. I have no problem. See, people, they have problem with humility. They got a problem with order. They got a problem with, uh, with, 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 the Bible says, uh, uh, it said that, that not being lords over God heritage. You, you can't just treat the saints anyway. They ain't your church. I don't care if you are a preacher. You can't go order the saints around. I've seen people and seen places which will unsave you if you relocate. Literally, like, it, it, it ain't give me to a standing church. If you just pray and you feel like, you know what, I need to go here. Literally, they will tell you're not saved. And, and then they will disfellowship the church that accepts you, and they will tell them, if you accept them as saved, then we ain't fellowship with y'all no more. How are you going to tell the saint that they can't, you can't control their life. You can't tell them where, you're not going to work. I said you ain't working at Walmart, because I want you to work at Myers. How in the world are you going to tell us about where they can work? Well, my family was supposed to go on vacation this week. Said, no, no, y'all ain't going on vacation. If y'all go on vacation, I'm setting you down. How you going to set somebody down because they taking their family in the summertime to see their auntie and taking them to, how you going to, what, 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 what? Because I'm the pastor. You was my pastor. <laughs> please, please. What, what, what in the world is this? And I'm going to tell you, be careful following that spirit because if a person got that type of spirit, they got a bunch of other spirits. I'm telling you, if a person got that level of spirit, if that ain't it, 
It's, it's a whole bunch of other spirits that are on this planet. The Bible also said obey them and got to rule over you. So it's both sides. It's talking about from a biblical principle perspective, there should be an obedience. There should be a willingness to adhere to sound teaching, sound principle, sound standard. It shouldn't be a mindset of if I don't want to do it, I ain't doing it. And I'll figure out a way even spiritually to justify why I'm not doing it. And we save this for the, for the sacrifice. It don't matter. You can try to figure out a spiritual reason why you're not going to adhere to sound biblical teaching. And you better be very careful that it's not pride and it's not a lack of humility that you just want to do your own thing. Because if you got that spirit, you would justify it. You would figure out a way to make it work. And it would be very convincing. It says here, not only that, but the death of the cross. Verse number, uh, it said not only death, but humbled himself, even death of the cross. The cross was the most humiliating form of death. Hebrews 12 said he's despised the shame. But he was willing to humble himself. Why? Because this hindered reputations. It was a public, it was a public rebuke. It was a public manifestation. The cross with thieves and, and murderers, insurrections, all the public, your family, your name, your legacy is potentially ruined because that's the way you remember. That was your funeral. Your funeral was the cross. He had to go through public humiliation where his reputation was being destroyed. People talking about it, lying on him, saying he did this and he did that when he didn't do it. Judas turned his back on him. Disciples, my Lord, began to abandon and go back fishing. He had the, the ones that he's trying to help piercing him. Damn it, my God. Yay. The ones that he's pray, like, been praying for. He said, believe. Well, how do you know he's been praying for? Because the Bible said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, oh, how I uh, weeped over you. It said he wept over the city because they were not. What? These were the same ones that was testifying to him and talking about it and this, that, and the other. But he was still able. To go through it. Pray for them. Take on the shame that came with his assignment. So here it said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. He was willing to suspend his rights. Become a man. Willing to serve. He didn't come as a king earthly. But he came humbly humbled himself all the way through death, every phase of it. He was obedient, even in the smallest of things. Even the cross. Let me close out with this. Humility will help a person not get knocked down. James 4, 6, it says he resisted the proud, but giving grace to the humble. But humility also will help a person, if they do get knocked down, to get back up. Psalm 51 says, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. I messed up. I should have been at war, but I wasn't. And David cried out. He humbled himself and said, my sins are ever before me. See, humility will keep you from getting knocked down. God resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Well, I need your help. I need your help. I can't go no further on my own. I can't go no further on my own understanding. I need your help, Lord. I'm not going to get knocked down. But also, if something happens and a person gets knocked down, if they're humble enough, they can be recovered. Amen. If they're humble enough, amen, they'll own it. I don't care what people say. I want to be clear. I don't care if I can't sing. I want to be clear. I don't care if I can't preach. I want to be saved. Amen. I want to be saved. Those that get knocked down with the right humility. See, if somebody ever get, go, don't go through something right, get set down, backslide, come back, whatever, you need to pray. Lord, I pray they got the humility to make it through this. Because if the humility is there, they're going to be fine. That's the way God designed.
I'll apologize. I'll own my mistakes. I'm willing to sacrifice. What does the Lord require to do justly? Love mercy. Walk humbly. Walk humbly. As we close it out with just a thought. <coughs> Lack of humility, black blessings. He didn't want to wash in the Jordan. Because he thought he was above that. Yep. But the blessing was on the other side of the act of humility. In Luke, when Jesus was teaching of humility, he said, when you go to a wedding, don't take the best seat. Because that might not be for you. And it would be a lot worse for them to call you down than for you to take a low seat and then they call you up. Let us, saints, pray that the Lord would help us all to possess the humility that's necessary Amen. for God to operate as he desires, as we pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We appreciate you, dear Lord, for your word. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the blessings, dear God. Father, you're bestowing upon your people. But Lord, we pray that you would help us and help us all to operate and to understand the role of humility. Father, from getting saved to getting sanctified. Father, to the unity of God's people. For the church being one, operating together to possess glory in our lives and our hearts. Father God, we must have humility, Lord God, to receive the blessings of God. We don't want to be naked, refusing to wash in the Jordan. Yes. Father God, and hinder our own selves. Father, we pray that we have the mind of Christ. Father God, he was willing to suspend his own rights. Thought it not robbery. Father, dear God, we pray, dear God, we'll esteem others more highly than ourselves. And Lord, if we do get done wrong, that we're willing to take the wrong. It's okay. It's okay. It don't matter. It's okay. Before I allow it to give me up the spirit, before I allow it to cause me to hate my brother, before I allow it to cause me to be bitter and upset, I'll suffer the wrong. Father, we just thank you so much for the, Lord God, the example of Christ. Father, his obedience in the smallest of things. Help us not to get lifted, to think we can cut corners, to think we don't have to receive full light, full truth. Help us to possess Bible humility. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, there, they'll sing just one verse, one verse of selection. There are those that desire prayer, want to be saved, or well, we need more, desire a little more. May we all desire a little more, a lot more humility. What do we see? Humble thyself. Humble thyself. What is all? Page 298. Page 298. Shall we say just one verse?
audience tonight. We also commend the congregation for doing a magnanimous job as we had to hold the celebration of life of two precious saints. One of the great important responsibilities of a congregation is to provide a proper send-off. The last earthly memory of a saint is their homegoing celebration. Thank you, saints, for possessing the burden as well as your willingness to support both homegoing celebrations. We're thankful for the Stackhouse baby making it here safely. Thank the Lord for the prayers of the saints. Sister Far, amen, you're facing a deadline. You was facing a deadline the other day. Amen. And God came through with that deadline. Amen. amen. What was it, sideways or back? Okay, so it was looking the wrong way and sideways, so it couldn't apply the proper pressure it needed to make it through the canal, and it was stuck in the tin in that space. Oh, saints of the devil. Oh, the devil came as a call began to come in. The devil coming in telling you, oh, here we go again. I'm like, oh, Lord, I rebuke the devil. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for the saints rallying. Amen. By the time they got up there, they were, how long were they even up there? Wasn't more than a half hour? Five minutes. My Lord, five minutes. Now, stop it. Five minutes, amen. Thank the Lord, the baby that did this and did that, flipped up, came in. Baby's here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Say, you know what the devil does? He minimizes the blessings and he magnifies, amen, the difficulties. But amen, we're not going to let him do that, but Charles. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for delivering again. Where's God? And he's right there. Thank the Lord. Be encouraged, Sister Taylor. Who's up next? Somebody next. I don't know who's next. Amen. Whoever's up next, be encouraged. Amen. All right, brother. Malawi from Africa came in and request for Bible teaching in that region of the world. Somebody may need to get a passport. We need to pray on that. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Where's Korea? Carter. Carter. Come here. Sister Dorinda labored with children for many years at her funeral. I go to the office and somebody comes in crying. Come here. What happened at Sister Dorinda's funeral? I got saved. Thank you. Oh, here you go. Say it again. I got saved at yeah. Sister Dorinda's funeral. How old are you? I'm 16. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you know what? Can I just get, I'm going to let y'all go. Praise the Lord. But listen, saints. She told the Miss American pageant, amen, that, that, that her desire was to labor for God, wear all, this world is a loose garment and all earthly possessions as dross. And they said that is not sufficient for you to get your crown. But thank the Lord, because she fought a good fight, she kept the faith, she finished her course, laboring. Thank the Lord, she got a crown, y'all. Amen, she got a crown. She got her crown to get Miss America. Thank the Lord, Sister Dorinda. Let's go for God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let me let me just say this. It was COVID. COVID had come. And we had a quick decision to make. The state, states that were more democratic ran, the Democrat Party. They had more restrictions quicker. So it looked like the church was going to be shut down. And we were going to have to be online. Sister Maria had come a year or two, or three or four, or five or six or seven before that, and said, I have my own channel, but would it be okay? Would we have permission to start church this channel? And at that time, we weren't real comfortable with video. So we said, okay, nothing official. You can do it on your own. She wanted to share with those uh, and her family in different places this gospel. When COVID hit, we had a decision. We, we couldn't put the church's responsibility on a saint. A saint can have a mission, but the Durham would do tracks 
and he had 10 he put up himself. But if the church is saying that we're going to do this, then the church has to assume the responsibility. So we said, okay, we got to make this decision. We can't put that on Sister Maria's back. The church needs to get their own stuff and do their own thing to make sure that it's handled and she can help work with it, this, that, and the other. And as I'm processing this, I didn't sufficiently let her know how quickly decisions were being made. My mindset was, let's get it up, run it, get us a camera here. So the church, I thought all y'all was going to be at home. And I was going to be here alone. That's how many churches did it. So I said, well, okay, we got to have this. I can't put that on her and get in the church. This, that, the church needs to do it. And whatever media would do it, she can work with the church that has to happen. I did sufficiently discuss it with her. We did it quickly, and it caused deep pain. So I had to go and try to figure it out and apologize. But I want to apologize to her publicly. I've done it privately. Amen. But I want to apologize to Sister Maria publicly for all the labor and effort that she put forth. Even going against our standards. Yeah, going against our standards. Because Brother Hampton didn't want no, he wasn't, anything that moved was worldly. We didn't understand computers and technology and all that. If it was real, was trying to explain it to us. No, 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 it's computer, it's not a TV, it's not anything, but the people can work. It's a, it's a, it's a tool. It's, it, it, we, we, we barely let her get away with it. Put a little camera after we sit down. Amen. But once we had to go forward, we had to say, church, if we're going to do this, you all need to invest in it. We can't put this on her. And my mind said, well, she can help out with the media ministry to make it happen. But I did not. And I kept trying to make up and make it make sense that Sister Maria, no. But when you put forth that much effort to start something that you didn't get no support with, using your own internet, your own little money, a lot of money, your own money, going against halfway the standard to make something happen. And then you come to church and, and it looks like it just shifted. I'm not thinking all that. I'm thinking Governor, who's the governor? What are the governor? Go governor Gretchen Whitmer. Amen. And she's down in Florida uh, on a vacation while she shut Michigan down. <laughs> and, and, and don't get me started. Don't shut the churches down while she's down in Florida vacation. Amen. But anyway, I'm G Governor Gretchen coming. We got to get the gospel out so I can make a decision. But Sister Maria, I publicly apologize. Don't blame it on nobody else but Brother Lee. I, I apologize to you privately, and I apologize to you publicly. Amen. I should have handled that better. I should have vetted you, had you come here, and let you help me develop the plans. Amen. amen. But we love and appreciate you. Amen. All right. Anybody else, amen, that I've not done right? <laughs> Sister, who got their hand up? Sister, cry no, sir, do that to me. <laughs> Sister, let her eat the meat she want to eat. Let her put forth. How many meats you want, Sister Credit? Thank you, man. All right. No, in all sincerity, in all sincerity, it caused much pain. It caused much pain. And we want to make sure that we do our part. Anything else for good in the order? All right. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we're going to be at service. And Friday night, we're back at Bible study. First time in Bible study in a while. Amen. No funerals or anything this weekend. Amen. Full speed ahead. All right. Anything else for good in the order? All right. Thank you, saints. You all have been amazing. They're going to sing us a verse of song, but we're dismissed right now. Bless you, saints. Sing us a verse.
man, a little woman that humbles himself. Jesus made himself for no reputation. The unity of the church is predicated upon humility. 